Welcome back to KC Talks EV. And yes, I'm in the Maxxis T90 EV. First of all, I just want to give a massive thank you to Maxxis York for lending me the vehicle for testing purposes. As I mentioned in previous videos, they offer excellent customer service. And in fact, they've actually got a really, really good deal on at the moment on in-stock T90 vehicles. I'll mention a bit more about the offer at the end of this video, but please make sure you go check them out. Link is in the video description below. So today we are doing the range test and the available capacity test. Unfortunately, we are not doing a 150 kilowatt CCS rapid charge. That's on the sole basis that um, there aren't that many 150 kilowatt CCS charges in my area. And the one that I normally go to at the York Hyperhub, I think is still having issues achieving 150 kilowatt. There is also no point in doing 50 kilowatt CCS rapid charging on the sole basis of I've tried to top up the battery and it was still getting around at 90, 95% state of charge. It was still getting the full 48 kilowatt from one. So I don't really think there's any point. Today's test route is going to be approximately 120 to 150 miles, depending on how far we get. Essentially, the weather conditions today are about 19 degrees Celsius. There is a little bit of wind from the east, so we will be having a bit of a headwind on the way out of Hull. And the roads are wet, unfortunately, so it is not going to be the most straightforward range test. You are going to lose a little bit of efficiency due to rain, but hopefully we do get a representative result. Anyway, let's get started. So we're about 20 miles in and we've hit the roadworks on the Ooze Bridge. It does annoy me every time I have to go over it and I can only do about 30 miles an hour, but, and given the fact that this is supposed to be a dual carriageway motorway range test, it does annoy me a little bit. However, I normally pick up the speed back up to 70 again the instant I go across it. So I guess in a way it doesn't affect the result too much when you are talking about the mileage on this test. And we picked our speed up back up to 70 again. So I'm about 50 miles in, I've hit quite a lot of traffic on the M1, but hopefully, I think it's just this junction at the moment, but once I clear this junction, it should be absolutely clear. So I'm turning back on the M62 now. Average energy consumption was 34.8 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. I will convert that back to miles per kilowatt hour and watt hours per kilometer in the table below. So it's taken me roughly an hour and 40 minutes to do that. There's been quite a lot of traffic across the M62. In terms of my average uh, speed, it was 55 miles per hour. Just see what we get on the return leg. Um, unfortunately, due to a lot of traffic on the M62 and things like that, and average speed checks, it's not as high, but I have been trying to maintain 70 where I can. Finally, I've done 93.2 miles. So I'm now gonna reset the second trip computer and we'll see how far we travel on the second leg. Okay, so we now finished up on the range test. It's now started pouring it down with rain, so I do apologize for any background noise or anything. 
So total mileage was 145.3 miles. Average efficiency was 38.4 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Now, if you convert that to miles per kilowatt hour, it was 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Average speed was around 55 miles per hour. A uh, good time to mention that I was basically doing 70 miles an hour until any roadworks, and about 20 miles in total was done at 20 to 40 miles an hour due to either traffic or roadworks. So I do apologize for that, but it is still fairly representative, not to mention it definitely did chuck it down with rain during the test. So I actually arrived here with 32%. I left with 99% and I used therefore 67% battery. Now, if you then start doing some calculations to calculate usable capacity, what you find out is you do 145.3 miles divided by 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. We get a total used battery of 55.88 kilowatt hours in order to do 145.3 miles. What you then find out is if you then want to calculate usable capacity, you just do 55.88 kilowatt hours divided by 67% and we get 83.4 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. That actually compares very favorably given the fact that total capacity is 88.5 kilowatt hours, according to SAIC. Finally, if you calculate a theoretical 100% down to 0% state of charge range, so that's where you do 83.4 kilowatt hours multiplied by 2.6, we get 216 miles. Now that compares very, very favorably to the WLTP of, I believe, 207 miles. So overall, yeah, not too bad of a result. And by the way, if you haven't already had a look at it, please check out my initial impressions video on the T90 EV. Finally, I just want to finish off the video with the actual deal that Maxus York is currently offering. So as part of the end of the ice age type deal, you're currently getting £6,000 off the price of a T90 EV. Plus, if you are eligible for it, you will get £5,000 off from the government as a government grant. They're currently throwing in, I think it's free metallic paint or something, and also they're offering a free home or workplace premises charger. They also finally have a lot of T90 EVs in stock ready to go already. So make sure you go check them out. I've left a link in the video description. So I think that's pretty much it. So if you found this video informative or you like it, please give it a like, dislike it if you didn't. Please share this to anyone who is considering purchasing a commercial vehicle. By the way, I have done initial impressions on the eDeliver 9, which is the transit size van, as well as the eDeliver 3, which is more like an EMV 200 size van. So make sure you go check that out. Another thing to note is please share this to anyone who is considering purchasing a commercial vehicle. It really does help me out. But I think that is pretty much it. So thank you for watching and talk to you later.